Tim Burton's Sleepy Hollow was the last of what might be called the Golden Age of Burton the Auteur. Produced by Francis Ford Coppola at the tail end of a cycle of reviving classic horror tales for Gen X audiences, and rather than simply casting new icons in lead roles, though Burton and Coppola certainly did that too, they used the film as an opportunity to revive the house style of the great Hammer Studios. They even cast hammer icons, Michael Goff. Taken by the headless horseman. Taken back to hell. And Christopher Lee in small but pivotal roles. Mr. Harker, I'm glad that you've arrived safely. Count Dracula. I am Dracula, and I welcome you to my house. How would jails overflow with men and women convicted on confessions worth no more than this one? Constable Crane. This is a song that we have heard from you more than once. Now, there are two courses open to me. First, I can let you cool your heels in the cells until you learn respect for the dignity of my office. I beg pardon, but why am I the only one who sees that to solve crimes, to detect the guilty, we must use our brains to recognize vital clues using up-to-date scientific techniques? Which brings me to the second course. There is a town upstate, two days' journey to the north in the Hudson Highlands. It is a place called Sleepy Hollow. Have you heard of it? I have not. An isolated farming community, mainly Dutch. Three persons have been murdered there, all within a fortnight. Each one found with the head Lopped off. Lopped off? Clean as dandelion heads, apparently. You will take these experimentations of yours to Sleepy Hollow, and there you will detect the murderer. Bring him here to face our good justice. Will you do this? I shall. Remember, it is you, Ichabod. Crane, who is now put to the test. The more evidence of the supernatural Constable Ichabod Crane receives, the less certain he becomes that he can solve the troubles plaguing the town of Sleepy Hollow. But the more certain he is that its origin is in human malfeasance, and not in the randomly ordered designs of the spiritual plane. He cuts a figure like a cross between Peter Cushing's Van Helsing, Peter Cushing's Sherlock Holmes. Nevertheless, it, it was the same spider that you lost. Oh, impossible. Far too far away. Are you suggesting that I've lost a spider? I'm afraid I am. You have, haven't you? You lost a spider sent you from the London Zoo about five days ago. 
Uh, are you interested in butterflies? My lord, I must insist. Will it help if I tell you I am fighting evil? Fighting it as surely as you do. And Peter Cushing's Frankenstein. You keep looking at him. Very soon, that will be you. Take him. Interesting. Very interesting. What is? In headless corpse cases of this sort, the head is removed to prevent identification of the body. But we know this was Jonathan Masbeth. Precisely. So why was the head removed? Why? Right. You have moved the body? I did. You must never move the body. Why not? Because. The stride is gigantic. The attacker rode Masbeth down, turned his horse, came back, came back to clean the head. Trapped between the real and the uncanny, bound by science and reason, and yet confronted with the end of both. The narrative of a conspiracy fostered by old men was also a hammer standby. Lord can't save his own. God knows what's going to happen. God, God knows how many people are ill with this thing. You still say there isn't a curse on us? It's a disease. Something that can be stopped. It's more than that. And Danny Elfman's score frequently recalls the work of the great James Bernard. Sleepy Hollow is a triumph of old-school craft, with photographer Emanuel Lubetsky finding a shockingly gorgeous, nearly monochromatic look to capture the cursed town. Sleepy Hollow itself is one of the better constructed sets of the modern era, designed beautifully and built with clear affection, and an eye towards a kind of gothic realism. The film could have simply been a tour of its immaculately antiqued buildings and still been an uncommonly tactile delight. But Burton back then wasn't content to simply construct a beautifully warped world. He was still in the part of his career where you could sense just how much fun he was having behind the camera. Just look at the vast quotients of Hammer-style paint-thick blood he throws at lead Johnny Depp, back when he was still taking risks as a performer. Why shouldn't Burton enjoy himself with a set this good? Advances in technology helping him mold reality with more hand strength than ever before, and one of the best casts he ever assembled. Burton's goth fever dream was one of his last well-reviewed pictures, and though I have not given up on him since, many have. I will say there is a kind of eerie magic at play in this film which breathlessly fuses Burton's modern comic style with Hammer's world of creeping classical malevolence. 
It's a romantic piece of careful and loving artistry from a kid finally walking in the world he used to observe when he was young. More films should have its bountiful production design, its beautiful sets, and meticulous art direction, its old-fashioned charm. We should still be haunted by the nightmares of antiquity, buried in our pasts but fresh in our minds. There should be more work, like Sleepy Hollow.